Throughout the myriad flavors of Space Marine Codexes, Chapter Supplements, White Dwarf Addendums, Beta Rules, Robin Credits' Fevered Napkin Scribblings, and Data Sheets Divine in the Entrails of Sacrificed Goats, there's always been one Space Marine Chapter that gets the short end of the stick. And then they grab it in their mouth and they carry it back to you and you have to throw it again and then they chase it and they grab it. It's Space Wolves, we're talking about Space Wolves today. So let's talk a little bit about why that is and how Games Workshop could fix it. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and welcome to a slightly different kind of video. I was going over the Space Wolves' new rules in Saga of the Beast and feeling, well... My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. I mean, I was entirely underwhelmed. Getting stapled with all the other Space Marine chapter mechanics like Doctrines and Steady Advance, Rapid Fire, blah blah blah. It's all real nice, and obviously it's pretty powerful, but in my opinion, it doesn't bring this maligned chapter back from the brink of near irrelevance. So I got to thinking, how have Space Wolves existed in this capacity for so frickin' long? What is stopping this chapter from becoming the next Blood Angels or Raptors? What's stopping them from dominating the meta with powerful, novel, and dynamic lists like their backstory so clearly wants them to? And I think this issue is systemic with Space Marines in general. So not counting random Forge World garbage, there are close to a dozen Space Marine chapters represented mechanically in 40k right now. And the Space Marine Codex includes the tools to create hundreds more. Unfortunately, it's difficult to capture the unique culture of a Space Marine chapter in a medium as granular as tabletop gaming, and GW doesn't really help itself with their fairly ham-handed rules design philosophy. The downside of this variety is that it becomes very hard to differentiate all these chapters suitably on the tabletop. For example, Blood Angels use jump axe and White Scars use bikes. But they both basically follow the same exact game plan, only one faction uses intercessors, and the other uses unkillable demon gods armed with the bottomless fury of humanity's greatest champions and clad in the finest and shiniest of gold nipple armor. At the end of the day, they both want to run across the table and use reserve abilities to outmaneuver their opponent and lock them in melee, to hit them with big hammers. Now part of the reason that the two aforementioned chapters see effective competitive play and are generally regarded well from a mechanical standpoint is that they follow the prime directive of melee armies in 40k. While they kind of refuse to admit it, Games Workshop has designed a system whereby melee armies are judged almost entirely on the length of their threat ranges and ability to make long charges. In a game where a misplacement can see the entirety of your list's damage output destroyed in a single round of shooting, and in which I would guess that at least 80% of the damage in the game is dealt in the shooting phase, melee armies absolutely don't have the luxury of being slow. That said, let's talk a little bit about Space Wolves, the literal red-headed stepchildren of both the Astartes organization and Games Workshop itself. Space Wolves are a faction solely inspired by the 1958 Kirk Douglas vehicle, the Vikings, and as such, they originally bore a lot of similarities to the aesthetic presented in that movie. They have round shields, fought with swords and axes, climbed tall buildings, and were improprietous with women. And fighting with swords and actions means they're a melee faction, right? So Games Workshop, obviously, gave them rules that helped them to deal damage in melee. Like, like a ton of damage, like so much damage. They got plus one to hit in melee, they got exploding sixes in melee, their basic infantry literally just have more melee attacks than a Codex Marine equivalent. Then, sometime in 5th or 6th edition, Games Workshop decided to pile in on the wolf aesthetic and give them wolf cavalry that were supposed to be good in melee, some flying boats to help them get closer to melee, literal fucking werewolves to fight in melee, and uh... I mean, whatever this is, I guess it helps with melee, probably. But in their rush to make bizarre, wolf-themed children's toys, Games Workshop forgot that one key tenet of their game, that melee armies need to actually be able to make contact with the enemy, and neither their Codex nor the buffs in Saga of the Beast really do that. Which leaves Space Wolves in a very strange position. If they were to gain the speed of Blood Angels or White Scars, they'd be yet another chapter thrown into the homogenous cupboard of melee chapters that charge really far. But to remain a melee-focused chapter and not get that ability resign Space Wolves players to the position of watching their Wolfen fail unlikely 9-inch charges before being shot to death. So that puts Space Wolves in the position that they've been in for decades. A bizarre, combined arms chapter that doesn't well support any method of play. Basically a confused used mob of stumbling drunks rather than the pack of lethal warriors everyone wants them to be. So how could this be fixed if GW had the cojones? I think I know how, but I don't think it's that easy. One of the Space Wolves' greatest strengths is that their line infantry have probably the coolest name for a line infantry unit in the entire game. The Grey Hunters. Now let's ponder for a moment the visualization of that name. To me, it doesn't sound like the name of a raving, blood-mad group of berserkers running around the battlefield like lunatics, right? They're restrained, stoic, and relentless. 
The Marines clad in dark pelts and handmade camouflage that stark the shadows of misty forests and appear like specters from the gloom and fog to rain down death only when they have their prey cornered and helpless. For much of their history, Vikings weren't these towering battlefield monstrosities that swept a dozen men from their shield wall with one mighty swing of their gratuitously oversized axes. They were raiders. Legendary. They would quietly attack their prey at their weakest point, then withdraw to their ships before armed resistance could effectively muster against them. So with that in mind, space wolves don't need to be blood angels or white scars to find their niche in the ecosystem of 40k. They need to be fucking raven guard. Um, phrasing? But these aren't the silent killers of the raven guard that assassinate their targets with a sniper rifle from 10 miles away. Space wolves are basically the emperor's shock troops. They need to be represented as forward operators, as breachers, and special forces. With that in mind, imagine an army dedicated to close-ranged combat, bolt guns and rapid-fire weapons that stocks its prey with high finesse stratagems such as outflanking, breaking out of melee, or reacting to enemy movement, and gains bonuses for being close to enemy units. An army that relies on elite infantry troopers to get work done. Units like Grey Hunters and Wolf Guard appearing where your enemy at least expects them, eviscerating your support and artillery with whirring chainswords and bolt guns, while Wolfen units ambush your forward elements and your game plan begins to disintegrate under the ferocity of the wolves. In my opinion, a highly technical marine army that relies on maneuvering and trickery to enable shooting at short range while still remaining moderately survivable due to their marine stat lines is something the game is sorely lacking and fits perfectly with Space Wolves as they are represented in the background. In any case, the focus of the chapter must change from relying purely on close combat in order for Space Wolves to actually fill a niche in the game. But that leaves us with the question, is Games Workshop actually willing to alter the faction's focus in this way? Or will Space Wolves always be trapped in the directionist limbo that they find themselves in now? Anyway, thanks for watching the video and let me know what you think down in the comments. I just wanted to present the discussion that I had with myself the other day, but I would love to know, do you agree with the direction that I proposed or do you think there's a better way to make Space Wolves relevant again? Remember to check out Tactical Tortoise on Patreon for early access to videos, exclusive battle reports, and all sorts of other goodies. And like and subscribe if you enjoy this style of video. And as always, happy wargaming. Keep it classic, folks.